we need, I think, uh, much more open data. And I am completely committed uh, to publication that's open. Uh, and I really only want to read publications that are available to the world at large and not to things that are only available to an academic elite. Because it is now primarily a digital world, we have to ask ourselves what are the implications for our missions as humanists. Maybe we'll just do the same damn thing we did before. I don't think so if we're going to be successful. So I think the great challenge of humanists is to think deeply about what they really want to do. What does it mean to be humanist? And then to say, all right, what are the new opportunities that I have because now we can publish and reach a global audience? What are the challenges that I face uh, in this context? How, what is it that I really want to do? Uh, and how can I advance the role of the humanities in contributing to society uh, as effectively as possible? To have the opportunity to be a humble professor in Leipzig is in some ways like a dream for me. Uh, and one of the things that I hope we will be able to do is to rebuild uh, this old tradition of publication in Leipzig. But because we don't really have much in the way of the kind of academic publishing in Leipzig that I do, uh, we have uh, a clean slate. So instead of being stuck with an older business model that doesn't necessarily work in the digital age, we can start from scratch and build something based entirely on open data. I think one of the problems we've had in the humanities uh, is that our students have not been able to participate in the creation of new knowledge in the way that students in the sciences have been able to. Now, as many people here in this country know, the idea of a university as conceived by the other Humboldt, Wilhelm von Humboldt, uh, when he was designing what is now Humboldt Universität, uh, was that what defined a university was, it was the place where you, everyone who was there was producing new knowledge. If you were learning someone else's knowledge, if you were learning received wisdom, you were at a school. Uh, and in the sciences, which have strong lab cultures where students participate in a lab, and then ultimately they develop their own exper experiments, that tradition, that humble dream is alive and well. But in the humanities, because we were working with small amounts of material that were published, because it, it was very hard to work with scholarship in French, German, English, Italian, as we do in, in, in classics, uh, it was very hard for students to do anything except Learn, learn skills until they were advanced graduate students. Now, we have tens of thousands of documents or books in Greek and Latin available under, into the whole world under an open license. We have so much data that anyone can see that we can't possibly uh, manage it by hand or even just by having a few professors work on it. So we have an immense field of opportunities where we need scholarship, we need contributions of many kinds, and for our students uh, to major in Greek and Latin, or for members of society to become interested in Greek and Latin, is to find opportunities to do something new, whether it's to translate a document that's never been translated, or to do some other useful task. The culture of academia is very conservative, uh, and people have strong incentives to think about what's good for their career. Uh, and what's good for your career is to still to submit your publications to very high prestige journals and not to really care whether those journals are open or not. Now, uh, and, and those who are academics usually have access to everything they want already. So they're really not conscious of whether their material is, is, is available or not. And often they don't care because we, we are trained to write for other specialists. Uh, so I think that it's a, it's a big challenge uh, to change in academia. But I have certainly changed myself because all of my colleagues, the people who I most closely work with, uh, are committed to open data. 
it would be easy to have an unsympathetic, unsympathetic model of professors as people quite comfortable uh, speaking or participating in conversations of one elite uh, uh, intellectual to another and not really being interested in breaking out of very narrow and small uh, networks of intellectual exchange. Uh, and that's really the issue. The issue is who is your audience? You can do the same old thing digitally and be completely digital. Uh, but if you're committed, if you only care about a small number of people who are other experts, then it doesn't matter what your medium is. And I know this because that's how I was raised to think. Uh, and I grew up thinking there were about 40 or 50 people who mattered uh, to me as a professional in the whole world. Uh, and uh, why would I care about anybody else, to be honest? So I think that the, it's really a question, again, not of whether you use digital media or not, but of what, how, what your view is towards authority, towards you know, who can say what, what voice, who has voices in interpreting the past, what your role is in the larger understanding of the past, who your audience is, and what your responsibilities are. Uh, and I think that for me, if I think in those terms, then contributing to an open and, and you know, uh, an open space that happens to be digital, that can only be digital given the way things work, is essential and there's no way out of it.